Looking to create some art with pastels? Here are 10 tips to help you out. Tip number one, consider the surface. The surface is your foundation and it's vital to your success. Try using a variety of different tones of paper when working with pastels. This allows you to start with a middle value and work your way outward so that contrast between colors are more evident. It's also important to consider the texture or tooth of the paper. Of course, pastel papers are available in a variety of different textures. Smooth surfaces will allow for smoother gradations of value and color, but one drawback is that they won't allow as many layers to be applied to the surface. Of course, rougher or more coarse paper textures will allow for multiple applications of the media, but you may find it difficult to achieve details early in the drawing process. Ultimately, the subject that you choose to create will most likely determine the color of the paper that you choose as well as the texture. Pastel tip number two, layer your colors. Since pastels are so closely related to the process of painting, it only makes sense that we approach pastels like a painting. In fact, many pastelists call their finished works paintings. This means that we can layer the colors on top of each other, just like we can do with painting. Layering the colors often leads to more complexity in the color. Of course, it leads to color mixing on the surface, which we'll get to in just a moment, but layering the colors also provides a more realistic appearance to the finished image. So it's important to apply multiple layers in many circumstances. Pastel tip number three, mix your colors. Of course, through layering the colors, we're naturally going to be mixing the colors. But often you'll find that the color that is in your pastel set doesn't necessarily always exactly match the subject. For this reason, we'll need to mix the colors. So instead of using that green straight out of the box, try mixing a little bit of yellow and blue, perhaps with the green, to create a more natural color. We naturally expect to mix colors when we create a painting, so it only makes sense that we should expect to mix colors when we're creating a pastel image as well. Pastel tip number four, build up to develop detail. It's easy to get overcome by details, especially when you're creating a drawing or a painting of a detailed subject. But with pastels, it's better to start with loose applications of sections of color. Slowly layer and slowly mix your applications until you get to a point where you're able to develop the details. So save the details for the end and don't allow them to overwhelm you. Pastel tip number five, mix blended applications and unblended applications. Variety is an important principle to be sure that you include in each one of your works of art. Of course, with pastels, there's no easier way to create variety by having some areas that are blended and some areas that are unblended. A lot of beginning artists working with pastels are just enamored with the process of blending that they blend the entire work when it really should be a mix between blended areas and areas where you have allowed the marks to just sit on the surface without any blending at all, creating the necessary contrast. Pastel tip number six, stay loose and work quickly, especially in the beginning stages. Pastels are wonderful for getting color on the surface quickly. And for this reason, in the beginning stages, we can work very quickly and loosely. We can always work the pastel on the surface to develop the details later in the painting process. You may try allowing your marks to originate from your shoulder or your elbow instead of moving your wrist back and forth. This will allow for broader strokes to be applied to the surface. In the beginning stages, we want to get as much color on the surface as quickly as possible. Pastel tip number seven, be patient. Now, I realize I just encouraged you to draw quickly and loosely, but being patient is a completely different thing. We need to allow those layers and mixtures of colors on the surface to actually do the work that we intend them to. This means that we have to be patient with our applications. We can work quickly as we make the applications, but we have to allow the drawing to develop through those multiple layered applications. I see a lot of beginning artists expect immediate results, and this just doesn't happen with any medium, especially with pastels. Pastel tip number eight, use pastel pencils for details. A lot of folks are turned off by the fact that pastels are bulky when you use them in the stick form. 
and some folks even overlook the fact that pastel pencils are available. Pastel pencils, of course, are a pencil that has the pastel material encased inside of it. Pastel pencils allow for a level of precision that's a little bit more difficult to achieve with traditional pastels. Of course, traditional pastels and pastel pencils can be used interchangeably. Pastel tip number nine, use black sparingly. Black is a very strong color and when overused in a drawing or a painting, it can overwhelm the image. It's better to use darker tones, like in this case a dark brown, to substitute for black. This will create a more natural looking appearance to the finished image. Now of course black in some circumstances is totally unavoidable. As we see here, a black pastel pencil is used to create the illusion of distant trees. It's also used for the trunk of the tree that's closest to the viewer here. Now black alone is sometimes okay as long as it's used sparingly, but often it's better to tone down the black with an application of another color on top. Pastel tip number 10, fixative is optional. Fixative is a material that can be sprayed over the top of a finished pastel image. Fixative, of course, is designed to keep the chalky pastel in place and protect the image. However, many people mistakenly believe that fixative is required. It's not. In fact, I seldomly use fixative on my finished works because fixative changes or alters the value of the color. We can see here with three different stripes of pastel color. No fixative has been applied to the colors on the left, while fixative has been applied to the colors on the right. We can see how the value is altered on the side that has the fixative. In most circumstances, I like my colors and values to stay true to the finished work, so I avoid fixative. If you're concerned with protecting your work or keeping it from smudging, just put a cover sheet over the top of it and keep it in a drawer until you're ready for framing. I hope you find these 10 pastel tips helpful and I hope they help you out in your future pastel paintings.